Here I've drawn an overhead view of a car taking an absurdly sharp turn around a corner. Let's say it's that hairpin turn at Monaco. I've drawn a lot of right angles here. This is depicting a car rotating about this center point here. This is directly in line with the rear axle. This line passes through directly at a 90 degree angle to the wheels. And following this line, you'll see that it goes to a 90 degree angle at this wheel. I haven't drawn the final line yet to this wheel, but take note that these two wheels are parallel. The sidewall of this tire is at a 90 degree angle to the tread of this tire and vice versa. All right, let's draw this last line. That's definitely not a right angle. Say what you will about my ability to draw a straight line, but the fact of the matter is, is that if you have three wheels that have a 90 degree angle and these two wheels are parallel, then this wheel is not gonna make a 90 degree angle with this center line here. Some may say, this isn't a big deal. The driver wants to turn left, the wheels are turned left, the car's gonna go left. And while that's true, this is sacrificing stability, tire wear, you're losing out on some grip, the car is gonna turn unpredictably. If this tire gets more grip than this one, then the car is actually going to turn a sharper corner than if this one gets more grip. Let's erase all these lines and I'll show you what's going on as this car rounds a corner. As this vehicle goes around this corner, all four wheels are gonna travel different distances. This wheel is going to go the shortest distance. Notice this is creating a circle around the center point. This one is going to go roughly that. And remember, I can't draw circles, so it's not gonna be perfect. This one's going to go like that, and previously it was around this way. This one is gonna have the widest circle of all of them. And if I had drawn this with perfectly straight lines and used a compass to make these circle portions, you would have seen that basically right here, it's heading straight out of the tire, straight in, straight out of the tire, same here, but here, you can see it's way off. If we assume that these three tires get the most traction and this one's getting the least traction, this one is going to break loose and slide so that this circumference can be maintained. I'm gonna redraw this tire with a more realistic angle so you can get a sense of what it should look like. Let's say that's about 30 degrees and that one's about 45. I just made those numbers off the top of my head, but it's just to say, this wheel is turned more outward than this one is. All right, let's complete this corner and head down the straightaway and see what we end up with. Uh-oh, we've ended up with excessive toe out. So while these tires are facing straight ahead and that's fine, these tires are both towed out quite a bit and that's gonna cause the car to be unstable when you're trying to drive straight, it's gonna wanna go one way or the other. Some cars do end up with a little bit of toe in or toe out based on the design but this is way too much. If only there was a way to make both wheels face forward when we're going straight, but adjust their toe out based on how hard we're turning the wheel, so that a little bit of turning adds a little bit of toe out, and a lot of turning adds a lot of toe out. It would be even better if we could make that angle perfectly what we needed for any angle we happen to turn the wheel. And while that may sound like something we may need a computer and some hydraulics to adjust on the fly, there's actually a very simple mechanical solution for this problem. Keeping it as simple as possible, this is just a rod that we turn back and forth and it pushes the wheel basically in and out. This green line will stay parallel with the wheel. What we really want is for everything to pivot based on Ackerman steering principles. So we drew these imaginary lines from the center of the rear axle to where the steering pivots on the ball joint. With that information, instead of having where the tie rod end pivots, we'll move it inward to right here. Because of this angle, if we were to turn this way, this would pull on this wheel faster than it would push on this wheel. Just that angle alone will make it so whenever you turn a corner, the inside wheel is going to be pulled at a steeper angle than the outside wheel. And because it's lined up with the geometry of the car, no matter where this axle happens to be, if you draw these lines and have the steering knuckle line up exactly that way, it will always turn exactly the way that you need it to. The easiest way I've found to demonstrate this on camera is just to build it. So here's an example I made. This design applies to race cars, passenger cars, trucks, SUVs. This even applies to drift cars, but that gets a little complicated because the back end is kicking out. And to correct for that, you steer the other way. But even with that issue, as you kick the back end of the car out and steer to maintain that drift, 
there comes a point where you're turning the wheels the other way enough that you get the toe out that you need for the other direction anyway. In that form of motorsports though, they may mess with this angle a little bit to get the desired effect they're looking for. But motorsport setups are beyond the scope of this video, so hopefully you got a basic understanding of how the Ackerman steering principle works, why it's used in both race cars and minivans. If you're interested in learning more about cars, consider subscribing and or looking through the back catalog of this channel. I've got a whole bunch of videos already. I do repairs, modifications, and general information videos like this, so I'll see you in the next Car Simplified video. Thanks for watching.